All right, guys, we are going to go through our Chapter 5 review questions here. Um, I actually have these written in, so I'm not going to be typing them. Um, but you guys can kind of just double check your answers to what I have written. Again, I took this directly from notes, um, from our textbook, all of that. So multiple alleles is defined as three or more forms of a gene that code for a single trait. Sex chromosomes are defined as a pair of chromosomes carrying genes that determine if a person is male or female. Sex-linked genes are genes that are carried on those X or Y chromosomes. A carrier is a person with one recessive allele for a trait but doesn't have that trait, so they're just carrying it, um, but it's masked or you can't see it. Okay. Um, then three patterns of inheritance. This is when you have single genes with only two alleles, so that um, dominant allele or recessive allele. Um, it could be single genes with multiple alleles, or it could be many genes that work together to produce a single trait. Then um, the pattern of single genes with two alleles. This just means that it has one dominant and one recessive allele that codes for a single trait. Um, and an example of this would be a widow's peak or like attached earlobes, um, something that is either going to be visible or not going to be visible. Then um, the pattern of a single gene with multiple alleles, this is when there are three or more alleles um, for that gene, but a person can only have two of those alleles but there's more combinations. So an example of this is blood type, where we have um, different blood types. We have A, B, O, or even AB. There's different combinations, um, but a person can only have those two alleles. Then when there's a trait that's controlled by many genes, this is just when many genes are working together um, as a group, and then they produce a single trait. And examples of this are hair color, skin color, and height. We have so many different variations of those um, because there's many genes that kind of all work together to produce those differences. Then the sex chromosomes for a female are XX. The sex chromosomes for a male are XY. And then the relationship between genes and the environment is that the environment can affect the outcome of a person's genes. Um, if a person doesn't have as good of a diet or what they're eating, that can change how the gene responds or maybe like stunt their growth or their health, even though their gene might have coded for something different. Moving on to section 5.2, when we get into genetic disorders. Um, a genetic disorder is defined as an abnormal condition inherited through genes or chromosomes. A pedigree is a chart or a family tree that doctors use to track which members have a certain trait or not or what's visible. Um, you can also see if a person's a carrier or not on a pedigree. Then a karyotype is a picture of all the chromosomes in a cell. The two ways that a genetic disorder can be caused is either to the changes in the structure or number of chromosomes. So you can either add chromosomes or take away chromosomes, um, or it can also be caused by mutations in the DNA of genes, whether the bases are changed. Um, if you remember when we talked about mutations, um, you can add bases and it change what's coded. Then um, looking at different genetic disorders, cystic fibrosis is when a person has um, abnormally thick mucus um, in their lungs and sinuses. Um, it's due to a cause or due to a loss of three DNA bases, so it changes what the code is. Then sickle cell disease or sickle cell anemia is when people have sickle-shaped red blood cells. It affects the protein called hemoglobin as well. And this is caused by a codominant allele that um, shows up along with the normal allele. Then hemophilia is when a person has slow clotting blood. So it clots very slowly or not at all. 
and this is caused by a recessive allele on the X chromosome. And then Down syndrome is when a person has an extra copy of chromosome 21. And the cause of this is during meiosis, when the chromosomes fail to separate properly, um, they get left with extra chromosomes. Then karyotypes are important because it helps reveal if a person has the correct number of chromosomes, um, and it can also identify if there's genetic disorders based on that number of chromosomes or if there's abnormalities. Um, then some different resources that people can use um, or are helpful is different medical care, either taking like vitamins or getting certain medications and treatments. Um, being educated about their genetic disorder or educating the people around them, um, specific job training to help them be more successful, and then there's even other methods such as counseling um, and things like that that can help people deal with their genetic disorder. Then moving on to section 5.3, um, defining selective breeding. This is the process of selecting a few organisms with desired traits to parent the next generation. Um, inbreeding is when two genetically similar organisms are crossed, so you're mixing essentially the same type of organism together. Then hybridization is when two genetically different organisms are crossed, so you're taking two things that are different and mixing them together that way. A clone is defined as an exact genetic copy of their original organism. Genetic engineering is when um, you transfer genes from the DNA of one organism into another organism to produce desired traits. And then gene therapy is when we insert working copies of a gene into cells that have a genetic disorder to try and fix the disorder. The hope is that those working copies will start to produce the correct code um, and it will override that genetic disorder or clear it out, essentially. A genome, then, is all of the DNA in one cell of an organism. Um, the three methods used to create organisms with desirable traits are selective breeding, cloning, and genetic engineering. So those are different ways that people can get those organisms. And then the two selective breeding techniques are inbreeding and hybridization. Then the last questions here, 34 through 40, are all from your textbook. So you may um, have had to go back through your textbook, or you can look through notes or answer these on your own. But scientists clone plants um, by simply cutting a stem or a piece of like a twig or something off of the original plant, then you put it in soil so that it can root and regrow, and then a new identical plant will grow. So that's an easy process. Then with animals, um, it's more complex than this description, but what they have to do is take the nucleus from a body cell and put it into a reproductive cell to then reproduce a new organism. Um, so if you remember our mouse cloning activity, we kind of went through those steps. And it obviously can take a lot longer, um, and it can not be successful as well. So it's a much more complex process. Then um, genetic engineering can be used in bacteria. Um, this can help produce insulin, which is needed by people with diabetes. So it's a benefit um, to have this genetic engineering where we can insert DNA and genes um, to produce what we want. Then. Some concerns that we have with genetic engineering are that it may not be safe um, or it could cause health problems down the road that we don't know of because we're trying to change the DNA um, and structure of different organisms. And the Human Genome Project is um, studying the human DNA and how it's structured. Um, and the goal of it is to identify the DNA sequence of every gene that is in the human genome. So there are about 30,000 genes in the human body. Um, so that is a very large, complex, detailed task. Then DNA fingerprinting is when DNA fragments are separated and put into a pattern um, that can then be looked at and read. 
and it's used to identify people um, and it's like your fingerprints but looking at DNA. So then does everybody have the same DNA fingerprint and this is false so they do not. Um, just like with our own unique fingerprints on the tip of our fingers, um, all the DNA and gene combinations that we have are unique to each individual. Um, the only exception would be identical twins. So once you are done with this review, um, you can pause the video and go back and get anything you missed. Um, but please make sure your review is submitted and please make sure you are practicing the review game. Um, so that you are prepared for our test tomorrow. If you have any questions, please email me, but otherwise you are good to go.